Hello and welcome to Mediumship Matters with me, Hannah McIntyre. And today I'm joined by Veronica Jenkins. And Veronica came into my awareness uh, over lockdown when I could see her working very, very hard for a number of mediums and a number of churches and collating information and getting it out there with clarity. So hi, Veronica. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Hannah. Nice to be here. It's really, really good to talk to you. And uh, regular listeners of the show will know how excited I am to pick your brain about the churches because I have no knowledge. Um, But first of all, tell us how you came to be a spiritualist or a medium or in on this crazy path that we find ourselves. Okay. Um, well, I got involved in my early 20s um, by attending a spiritualist church in West Bridgeford in Nottingham. Um, Before that, kind of looking back, I kind of sensed spirit before then, but I hadn't realised what it was. And I'd grown up with stories about my great grandmother who'd um, been a medium as well. Um, But I don't feel I, I don't think she was involved in churches or anything, just one of the ladies on the street that people used to go to <laughs> you know that kind of thing um so yeah I got very heavily involved quite early in my life um and uh, was fortunate enough to um actually support West Bridgeford um in the committee and was president there for a couple of years um and uh, got married down at Stansted as well oh, um, did you? 96 yeah um Minister Leonard Young performed the service so um uh, it was a wonderful period of my life um and just went on from there um after I got married and moved to the West Midlands um so got involved with Tamil Spiritualist Church at that point um just in in the committee Mm -hmm. um but then my career took over I had a couple of kids so spiritualism kind of took background still did constellations and local churches and things um, but it wasn't until um, I, I retired, um, just as lockdown started, that things kind of went mad. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Everybody else had a quiet time through lockdown and I suddenly you developed did not. a whole new career. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, now there's a theme that I'm seeing in your story here, which is you are a volunteer. <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> you like to help because I can I have to sit on yeah. my hands in committee meetings because otherwise I just volunteer oh, for everything <laughs> and um, then I wonder why I'm exhausted and, and can't function so what drew you into the church initially if you weren't from that kind of background did you just walk by one day and go oh, my no um it, it's funny because according to my mom I wanted her to take me to a local spiritual church when I lived in Sunderland before I went to uni oh. In Nottingham, um, and I was actually brought up in the Christian church. Apparently, I was taken to church in my pram, and went every Sunday until I was eighteen, <laughs> when oh. I actually had a choice whether I wanted to go or not. <laughs> um, so, ha- formal religion as such, and having a structure to your rigid religious beliefs, is something I've very much grown up with. Mm-hmm. So going into a spiritualist church where there is a, a, a level of formality in terms of the structure of prayers, hymns, um, th- that appealed to me. It felt like home. I love that. Um, so it, it, it came from there, really. Oh, so OK. So there wasn't a particular, you know, you weren't trying to get a message. You didn't. You just no. oh, I'll go in there and see what's happening. And, yeah. yeah. And then. I was always very curious. I, I always had books on the, you know, supernatural. I'd always, um, as soon as I was old enough and could buy some tarot cards, I bought them for myself and been playing with them for years and all of those kind of things. So um, th- there was always an interest in, in in that and astrology and astronomy and all. So they, they I mean, you they do- get you. <laughs> they get you in it, whatever way they're going to get you, they get you. So I love this. So how did, were your family okay with you taking the the, the sidestep, shall we call it? Oh, absolutely. I think my mum was just pleased I was still going to church of one form or another. Yeah. <laughs> um, and of course, it was her 
grandmother that was a medium as well so that, that there was no issue with that oh um, okay I love it so you went in there got involved on the committee and then of course as it does for so many people we find it and then we have to kind of walk away for various reasons I always think we need a bit of life experience as well yes to do mediumship yeah. um and then then it came back and then it came back with a bang because then you were trying to organize people who in my experience are generally pretty difficult to organize <laughs> um and trying to get cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> well <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were going to say no Hannah but I'm really <laughs> anally attentive. I like things very organized and very to the point yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, I know sometimes when I'm working with other mediums, there, there's almost a kind of it'll come together, and I'm like, well, only if someone makes it. <laughs> so, you started with daily lists, didn't you, of everything that was happening to keep people in contact? Talk to us about how that idea came in, why you wanted to do it, all of that. Well, um, through the years, I wasn't that involved in the churches. I for whatever reason I, I like lists and I like being organized I was a head teacher for 20 years so oh, well, there <laughs> you comes go. With the, the territory I, I built myself up a, a database because I've always been into computers as well um of all the spiritualist churches that I knew of and all the rest of it don't know why I did it just did it and um when lockdown came I, I it did strike me about well how is this going to work is people just going to stop practicing their religion um when actually it could be a time if there's going to be a significant low amount of people passing on that people really need the support of a spiritualist church um and then i was aware of um groups that were sharing events there's tony swindells had a group that he would share events and encourage people to post events up on his group and i thought well that, that's great but actually there's lots of places that are doing stuff because i'd started to link with them anyway um and there's nowhere that it's actually coming together as a list Mm -hmm. um and again it, it's my experience as a head teacher is that people need information Mm -hmm. you know um not everybody has the skills or interest or time to actually go and find the information and if you put it in front of them they will use it um but it, it needs collating it needs pulling together um so i just did you know i thought right well let's see how many i can find and what I can do i think in those early days it was lucky to get you know three or four things happening on one day 47 things today <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> just mad there's more going on now than there was through lockdown wow and do you think Bye. that's because more's being organized or more people have heard about you or um probably a mixture of everything that um that people see it as a possibility to mm -hmm. start with because i think before lockdown people didn't even consider going online mm -hmm. you had a few online mediums and people doing private readings online but certainly not doing services although um i'm a deity they were doing services um and i think that was the only one that was actually doing services online um prior to lockdown but then some churches were very quick on the uptake pool spiritualist church was very quick on the uptake in terms of um putting services on things um sorry i've lost where well. no that's fine i'm, I'm just <laughs> i'm listening to you i'm going all soothed out and how lovely so how no that's how I, I saw it starting with you as well was this starting to collate the lists and people were saying i was told as a, a medium who wanted more practice who wanted to 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 follow the lists and then I could find out where the churches were which is how I connected with you but you've now taken that even further haven't you because you now have a directory is that what you're calling it yeah yeah um that started when I'd done my list bef my database before of all the churches and um that had built just bigger and bigger and bigger and I thought well 
why don't I do something else with this? Mm. And um, the, it's one thing doing it online, and I, I thought about doing it online, and I even linked with Spiritual Psychics TV, and they've got used my database of churches as the foundation of their directory online. Um, but I felt it needed more than that, um, that, you know, as a medium going out to churches, where are these churches? And I thought, you know, it'd be useful just to have a book where all the addresses are in. <laughs> I yeah. didn't have to look it up every time and remember where these places were. So um, I talked to a couple of other mediums uh, who published books and things like that and learned all about um, the Amazon, the self-publishing part of Amazon. Mm -hmm. So I signed up for all of that and published it through Amazon and put it all together and amalgamated it all together and because there's no copyright with information about churches obviously there's um gdpr in terms of mediums and their personal information mm -hmm. which was a massive job when i was doing the mediums directory because once i've done the churches it seemed a natural progression then to do a book on mediums um but that that was enormous job that took days weeks to, <laughs> to put together um and getting permission from all the mediums to get the information and put it into a book so that that's where that came from and um both books are available on amazon and um on my website as well amazing so that was what the next thing i was going to say to you if someone wants to look for it on amazon what do they put in to get it to come up um spiritualist uh spiritualist venues directory or spiritualist mediums directory okay. and 2022 i've done it per year because i knew straight away with the venues one that um there was still when it was published in january there was still a lot of clo churches closed and most of those have opened up now so i knew straight away that i'd need one for 2023 because the, the, there's a, it's yeah. a different list because I didn't include the closed down ones unless I knew very definitely they were opening up again because there was a period of time where it looked as though there was a fair number of churches closing yeah. um, which, which was a shame to see. Well um, I was going to ask you about that actually so we'll do it now because it's it's leading into it what do you think is the the biggest challenges facing the churches because I've heard now obviously as you know I'm not massively connected with the churches but I've heard from people that churches are some of them are finding it tough at the moment it's interesting because some are finding it really tough and others have got more people in than they've had ever before mm -hmm. and it, it doesn't always follow what's behind that um I know when I've been to Blue Lodge in Droitwich they've been rammed out there but then I've gone to Leicester and less progressive and there's only been about seven people <laughs> just the same medium um yeah. but you know so I, from that I know it's not me <laughs> yeah because <laughs> that's the first thing they're all going on both ways you know you can't you know cater to the ego both ways um and I do wonder how much it is about publication and advertising and getting it out there because I know with Blue Lodge they do an awful lot of local advertising in the local papers they actually spend some money putting it out there to be fair to less I don't know what advertising they do it might be they do the same and they're still not getting the results I don't know um it could be to do with parking <laughs> you, you well just yeah. And people, I think, are still processing the few years that we've had. And it can be I mean, it's very hit and miss with me and in my private work. Uh, some of it is brilliant and just sells out. And some of it, people ask for stuff and you provide it and you've got a tumbleweed going by. So it's yeah. still a very, very changeable thing. And I, I think that they're lucky the churches as a whole are lucky that they've got someone like you who's got the computer skills and is willing to spend the time getting it out there. Because from my layman's non, you know, my parents are atheists growing up in that environment, going into a church environment is makes me nervous. And so I think you have to make it accessible to people who perhaps don't 
understand it and don't know I went to a funeral the other day and they were you know we hadn't they hadn't got enough I want to say guidebooks you know what I mean order of services <laughs> out <laughs> yeah. and so you know uh, and they they sang a hymn and I only knew some of the words from when I was at primary school and I felt really you know awkward about it especially as a lot of the people it, it's not a spiritualist church and a lot of the people around here know what I do and were like nudging each other that I was in there so it, it's always it's interesting so for an absolute basic person like me can you tell me the difference between spiritualist Christian and Christian spiritualist churches okay um christian church is very much just about the um religion of christianity Mm -hmm. and it's about worshiping god and christ and um prayers to to god within that sorry my dog (laughs) barking um and you know it's an expression of the christian faith Mm -hmm. um and whatever you know you believe in within your christian faith a church service is an expression of that yeah so when it comes to a spiritualist service that is exactly the same that it's looking at the spiritualist religion and it's an expression of that religion Mm -hmm. so the spiritualist religion is about um proof of life after death hence why you have your mediumship part of the service But also spiritualism is about healing. So you will have healing prayers within that. Spiritualism is about um, the recognition of the brotherhood of man and the philosophy behind spiritualism as well. So hence on a Sunday, you will have a section of philosophy, like a sermon, Mm. basically, a sermon. Um, And it can range from five minutes to 20 minutes in length. Um, again similar to a sermon Um, and obviously you've got songs as well now the songs within spiritualist church usually to raise vibrations get everybody joining together to actually have a feel of that brotherhood uh, uh, of man which is part of the spiritualist religion again it's an expression of faith Mm. Um, so when it comes to a christian spiritualist it's kind of an amalgamation of the both mm-hmm. because you will usually have people who still have very much their Christian faith, but that is intermingled within the spiritualist faith as well because there's nothing within spiritualism that would actually preclude that belief of Christianity. Mm-hmm. So you, you could be a Muslim and a spiritualist you could be a Sikh and a spiritualist you could be a Christian and a spiritualist it's just structurally I suppose within churches um, there hasn't been that movement into other religions and setting up you know a a service around that nature but there's nothing within spiritualism that would preclude other religions in that way because it's about god it's about life after death it's about love and joining together which is the basis of all religions <laughs> until men get in the way i think and then <laughs> and then it becomes unkind yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> until okay. uh, into politics into the power games and all the rest of it yeah it's part of human nature unfortunately you get it in every part of life you get it in work you get it in friendships and of course you get it in religion you can't separate the two because it's part of human nature yeah the humans are there they're going to bring their stuff wherever you go whatever you do so when you um do a service so it is like a church service but it's got some mediumship in there as well has it yeah so the usual structure for a a spiritualist church service is that you'll have an opening prayer done by the medium um you'll then have um healing um prayer that can be at the beginning some churches do it at the end some in the middle you know but you've got healing somewhere there um you'll then have your philosophy especially if it's a divine service um evenings of mediumship don't usually have the philosophy bit Um, you'll then have a song and then you'll have your mediumship and then you'll have your closing prayer and then you'll have a cup of tea 
<laughs> and some biscuits if you've been ready. Yeah. <laughs> and see, the singing thing is really interesting to me. So one of the best energies that I've ever seen in a demonstration was the teacher demonstration at AFC where Lynn Parker was chairing and she put on Black Eyed Peas, um, good, it, we have a good night and she got everybody up and clapping and it was tangible. The energy in the room was crackling. It couldn't have failed to be anything other than the amazing demonstration that it was because of tuned in, it was so fab. So bearing that in mind, do you find, here's a question for you, when you go to a spiritualist church, everyone makes super effort to sing or is it like when I've been in a Christian church and it's really limp? <laughs> Um, the, both extremes and everything in the middle kind yeah. of thing. Um, yeah. It depends. Earlier this week, I was at Tamworth Church doing a service there, and they'd got seven new people, I think it was, there that had never been to a spiritualist church before. Mm -hmm. Well, they were. <laughs> there was one of them whose energy was really fizzy that was joining in, but the majority were. Um, so. I think it depends upon the people there. If they understand, if they feel the energy, then they'll be singing their hearts out. It also depends on the song that the church puts on. True. I because some places, <laughs> this is real dirge has been put on, you're thinking, oh, no. Yeah. But uh, others will have much more modern music and that. Um, and it, it just depends whether you know the song as well you know if you know Absolutely. the song you're going to join in I have this I think someone's put a curse on me that whenever I sing in a group I just pitch so any dogs can hear me I don't <laughs> know why and I'm aware that I'm doing it so I try and sing quietly which makes it worse and it's just any medium that sort they'd go what are you doing you're just killing it <laughs> you're ruining it um so there's all sorts of stuff the self stuff again that comes up so did you learn your craft of mediumship through churches is that how you right the way it used to work because we're going back 30 40 years now <laughs> the way it used to work is that you had to be invited to a development circle okay ah. so you'd go along to church and you'd become a regular at church and get to know people and let people know that you were interested and if you were lucky that you were then invited to join a development group um the awareness groups were more open to everybody um but there weren't a lot of them and I was lucky that I, I was invited to join a lady called Pat Hunt. Um, she lived in Loughborough and she ran a, a, a mediumship circle. She was actually, oh, I'm going to get his name <laughs> She was actually taught herself mediumship by, oh, the gentleman. My memory is appalling, absolutely appalling. The, the well-known medium that was down at Stansted. Um, Gordon Higginson yes Gordon Higginson actually taught Pat wow. um, so I know there was a good pedigree there and she was very very good at teaching and it was proper teaching mm -hmm. uh, of mediumship skills of sight you know you developed your psychic skills and then moved into your, your mediumship skills and it was expected to take years and it did and, you know, you get people developing in months these days. It, it wasn't about that. You developed over years because there was um, you learned about your energies, how to control your energies. Therefore, you're able to maintain your energy throughout a service. Um, you were taught about the format of the services. You were taught how to do the philosophy so you could do a church service because that's what it was about it wasn't mm -hmm. about doing private readings it was about you being a medium good enough to go on platform and so uh, after a, a few years Pat and the, the group of ladies that she worked with uh, I was allowed to go on platform with them did that for about six months and then I was allowed to right you can go off and do your own <laughs> services now <laughs> amazing amazing I always think because when I wanted to practice and you you're right you can't rush it and there's so much self stuff that has to be sifted yeah. through I think to be a medium and um 
when I, I sat in a development circle with somebody who does work churches, but it was it was never church based. And um, when I decided that I wanted to really work on my demonstrated mediumship, I had to invite people to my home and I couldn't just do a couple of links and sit back down because they'd all come out. So it was such a baptism of fire because you felt like you had to make, you know, I went from nothing, <laughs> doing it in a circle, doing it in a group, doing it for a couple of friends to jamming a load of people in my living room and feeling probably with my own pressure that I had to do it for an hour and a half or an hour. And that was a lot. And I've often thought yeah. it would have been so lovely just to have been able to go in with somebody else's gig, just do a couple of links and sit back down. <laughs> it was still nerve wracking. Oh, Absolutely. Gosh, I still yeah. remember the nerves now. Yeah. But, but yeah. there's an element that you need that nervous energy as well. Um, if I don't get that nervous energy before a service, it, it's never as good. Never. The, the links just aren't as strong and all the rest of it. Agreed. So you are a busy lady because you're still doing your directories, your daily lists, but you're also a booking secretary for a church. Yeah, um, that started through lockdown. There was a couple of churches that contacted me, um, Victoria Road and um, Blue Lodge, actually, um, said that they were interested in doing online services, but didn't have the skills for zoom and they didn't have the zoom so i took out a zoom account and um started setting up services and as part of that i would book the mediums for them as well so i've been doing that for quite a long time for victoria road blue lodge back in their church they're not doing anything online anymore oh. um and i also got caught into spiritual psychics tv so i booked their mediums on a wednesday and a saturday night um and um oh it was somewhere else as well I can't remember oh um I'm a deity uh I was booking their services on a Saturday as medium through a Saturday as well so I just felt well with lockdown finishing and it's things changing um I, I, I'd start charging for that kind of service mm -hmm. and see whether other churches were interested so uh, at the moment I've got Angel Voices at Bradwell that I'm doing um, booking their mediums for them for next year um, and if any other churches are interested because obviously I've got all these contacts of all these mediums yeah. <laughs> um, and I know it's a headache because I've been booking secretary so many times before at different churches that I know it's a, a a problem to do not just initially setting it up but you, you, there's always cancellations things happen in people's lives um whether it's sudden illness or whether you know they've moved or other changes and they have to bring get those cancellations covered and i'm just lucky that i've got all these contacts that i can you know just get in contact with and say are you available well, not um, lucky. I would say you've worked hard for that. But yeah, you are the lady <laughs> with the know-how, no doubt. Absolutely. And that's such a good idea because, I mean, my idea of it could be completely wrong. But I know that a lot of the churches, as as things are moving more online and things like local papers and local newsletters are becoming more obsolete. We used to have a village village mag. We don't get one anymore because there's no one doing that. You've got to find other ways to reach people, haven't you? And reach yeah. those audiences. So yeah. Someone with the tech skills is very useful indeed. So, but you also demonstrate. Yes. You also do all that side of things. So, and do you teach and do any teaching like that? Or No, no. Um, I have done in the past when I was at Tamworth years ago, I, I, I led a circle there. Um, but it, it, and I've done a home circle before, but I've never really got back into that and, I know I will at some point, but I know it's not the right time yet. I, I need to get other things that I'm doing sorted. Haven't um, learned to bend space and time yet then? No. <laughs> <laughs> I know that one well. Um, amazing. So what do you think, in your opinion, makes a good medium? A good evidential medium is somebody who is true to themselves, who is true to spirit, who has a very high degree of honesty, um, who is able to make that spirit contact that's very close to get 
a lot of personal information and details about that spirit contact. It's not about psychic links of what's happening in somebody's life. That, that To me, that is not evidence of life after death. And the religion part of spiritualism is proof of life after death. Mm. It's not playing around with psychic. <laughs> okay. I agree. And, you know, there's, there's a role for psychic. Um, there's, there's times when I go and see my friend Soroya and we just read cards for each other. Because it's fun and there's questions in your life you want answering. Absolutely. (laughs) So there is a role for that, but that is not spiritualism. Spiritualism is mediumship, of evidential mediumship, of proof of life after death, because that's where the faith comes in. That's where the belief structure comes in. Um, So for my view, a good medium is one that gives good, solid evidence about the contact that they've got, the the loved one in spirit that they've got, that they're giving details about their life, they're giving details about their death, they're giving details about memories, they uh, have obvious emotions about the relationships, all of those kind of things. That's good mediumship to me. Absolutely, absolutely. And that doesn't come easily. I mean, it does in its simplest form, but you have to get yourself out of the way. And that's the bit that years if you have my opinion <laughs> well, that's where the trust comes in that's where the trust you've got to have absolute trust with your guides and spirit and your, your contacts absolutely. absolute trust so what do you think is next for you obviously you've just said you might do some teaching in the future but where are you it's nice to be driven isn't it? it's nice to have ideas where do you think you're focusing um I know I've got the two next year's directories coming up and I'm going to start pulling the information from them together in November. It won't take, well, I'm hoping it won't take as long as last year because I've got this year's as a foundation. Yeah. Um. So I know there's that piece of work to do, which will take me most of November and December. I would like to build up my support for churches um, and build up my web- website. I've, I'm offering, um, for churches to have a page on my website free I construct it for them so there's nothing that they have to do Mm -hmm. um and you know if more mediums want to come on as part of that as well I do charge for mediums I put three pages together for them um and just a ton of consolidation I think um uh, and pulling all of that together and I think once the directories are published for next year then I might sit back and think right where to next yeah. <laughs> well, I'm saying to spoke just give me some time to consolidate a bit <laughs> yeah exactly until they're doing your admin for you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're, they're gonna have to accept well yeah. thank you so much it was I was so excited when you said you'd come on because I knew that you would be open to my probably irritatingly basic questions but just wanting to know because it's it is diff, it's a different path and a very wonderful path and a valid path and I just wanted to hear about it and so that people who want to go into a church feel like they can they'll always be welcome amazing thank you so much Veronica thank you Hannah <laughs>